Hey folks, I'm Jesse with Pony Box Woodshop, and today we're going to test out sliding dovetail grooves when used with dovetail clamps. Now, I use these micro jig dovetail clamps on all kinds of shop projects, including my drill press table, table saw sleds, and my bench vise. So I'm curious to see just how strong these things are. It's one of the main questions I get asked on any video that I make that has sliding dovetails in the dovetail clamp. Now, don't worry, this isn't a sponsored video, so I'm going to push these things to the limit, and I'm going to see exactly where they do break if they break. All right, for today's little experiments, we're gonna be using the micro jig dovetail clamps. Now, these are the clamps that I use every day in my shop and it's the only ones that I have. So these are gonna to have to do. But to keep everything an even playing field, I'm gonna use the micro jig dovetail router bit in my router table and I'm gonna set it to the recommended manufacturer's height. So that way, all of the sliding dovetails are exactly the same and recommended for these clamps. After I got that set up in the router table, I went ahead and routered some sliding dovetails in three different types of material. I did three quarter inch plywood, three quarter inch MDF, and then three quarter inch hardwood, which I did in ash. These three different types of material should give us a really good idea just how strong these sliding dovetails are. Now that we have sliding dovetails in each one of our test materials, we're gonna slide our clamps into place, put a piece of wood down that we're gonna clamp, and then clamp it down. So the question is, can we tighten this enough to make this clamp pull through the dovetail and fail? We're gonna try that with each one of these. I'm gonna tighten them as hard as I possibly can and see what we can do. Now, if that doesn't work, I've got a couple more ideas that we're gonna to test to see if we can make them fail in some other scenarios as far as just regular clamping goes. All right, first one we're gonna try is the ash. We're gonna put everything I can into this and see if we can't make this thing fail. Here we go. Let's try it out. That is about as tight as I can get that. I mean, there is really nothing more that I can put in it. As you can see, the clamp is in so much pressure, it's kind of moving sideways. I can't go any tighter than that, and that thing is not even close to failing. Um, it is still in there. It is not going anywhere. As far as the ash goes, I cannot make that fail. So let's see if the MDF does it. All right, I can tell that I'm getting a lot more turns out of the MDF, but I don't think that it's failed at all. No, you can see how much it's raised up. It's definitely not as sturdy. When it comes to the ash, I can push backwards on that clamp and it's not going anywhere. But with the MDF, I think if I push backwards enough, Yep, I can make it fail. If for some reason you were using the MDF and you had this clamped as hard as possible and you pushed backwards on the clamp, you're gonna pull it out. All right, now let's try this out on the plywood. Clamp it down. All right, now that is as hard as I can absolutely clamp that. As you can see, the front of this clamp is lifted up. Now the piece is sturdy. It's not going anywhere. And I can already tell the, the plywood is definitely stronger than the MDF. Let's see what happens if I put backward pressure on the clamp. And again, we're just seeing if this thing can fail. I really don't even know what scenario it would be when you were grabbing the clamp like this and pushing backwards, but let's just try it out and see if we can make it break. No, I cannot make that break. I heard it crack just a little bit, but... I'm putting my entire body weight, and I weigh about 200 pounds, into that, and I cannot get it to break. Plywood's definitely stronger. Um, it's not going anywhere, and I can't even forcibly break it. But now that we've clamped these as tight as we possibly can and tried to push back on them and break them, let's take this off and see if we damage these dovetails in any way. So now that our clamps are out of the way, I really got down and looked at these dovetail grooves, and there's no damage to them whatsoever even grabbing the clamp and pushing backwards on the plywood and of course the hardwood I had no doubt on, it did not crack them at all. And the upward clamping pressure from the dovetail clamp raising up, it didn't hurt the sliding dovetails at all in any place that I can see. As far as the plywood and the hardwood goes, good to go. Now the MDF we were able to make fail, but I will say I did it in a very unconventional way. As far as the regular clamping pressure on the material, I couldn't move it in any direction. It was clamped well and it was not failing at all. It wasn't until I grabbed the clamp and pushed backwards 
that I was able to make it fail. Now I've got one more idea that I want to do on each one of these materials to kind of see what each one of their failure points are and see if I can make them fail. So I'm going to set that up and look at it again. But one important thing to note, and one of the things that I kind of realized as I was doing this and the way I've answered these questions all along is when these dovetail clamps go into place, when their material is on top of it and you're clamping down, the material is pushing down on the clamping surface. So it's going to be really hard for this thing to come out or for these edges to fail in any way. I have complete confidence in these clamps and in this system. I don't think that using plywood or hardwoods and for most applications, MDF, I don't think that these things are gonna fail in any normal application at all. Okay, now I kind of have it set up. I can't really imagine when you would have a clamping scenario like this, but I've got it bridged up to where the piece that we're clamping is setting up above the dovetail groove, and I have that piece clamped to my workbench. In theory, I should be able to tighten this enough to see if it fails and pulls up. See it cracking right there. So not much pressure with MDF. Well, that didn't really take a whole lot to peel that up. It did peel right up when the piece that you're clamping isn't flat on the surface, but I can't really figure out a scenario where this would be something that you're doing. But hey, you get to see that it failed and really wasn't that hard to make it fail. All right, let's put some clamping pressure on here and see if we can't make this plywood fail. Mm. Definitely already taking more clamping pressure than MDF. This is really holding up a lot better than I thought it would. That surprises me. That is about as tight as I can go. And I don't think that plywood is going anywhere. I'm looking down through there. It doesn't even appear that it's being bulged out, cracked, or anything. So the plywood honestly thought I could make it fail, but I cannot. Even with the piece raised above and it being plywood, I cannot tighten this enough to make that fail. That's impressive. Let's see if I can put some. Backward pressure on it. Yeah, there we go. So if I grab the clamp and push backwards, we can break it. I was able to make the plywood break, but I had to pretty much cheat. I'm thoroughly impressed with the plywood. That really did hold up well. Plywood's definitely an excellent option for this. If you can't make that fail with the piece raised above it, it's never going to happen. In normal use, when whatever you're clamping is laying flat on the surface, it's just not gonna fail. There's no way. All right, on to the ash hardwood. So after seeing what the plywood did, I just have a hard time believing that I'm gonna be able to make this ash fail in any way, but we're gonna give it a shot, see what happens. Oh, wow, hold on. Whoa, that was shocking. I did not see that coming. Man, that did not take much at all. And that ash just popped right up off the edge. So the plywood was definitely stronger than the ash when it came to this test. Let's see if we can just break this right off. Oh yeah, pretty easily. When it comes to the little corners and stuff, um, it just couldn't hold up to the pressure without the piece lying on it. So that was actually pretty surprising to me. I didn't see that coming. I didn't think that I was going to be able to break this at all. Um, but definitely was even easier than the plywood. So, all right, with some manipulation, we were able to break every single one of the test materials that I made. Um, but I will say that it was an unconventional clamping scenarios. Uh, never would I be clamping a piece that's raised up above uh, the material that I have my sliding dovetail in. So. Kind of a moot point, but it was fun to see where and how these things broke. I was really uh, impressed with the fact that plywood held up better than the hardwood. I don't know why I was that impressed, but I just kind of expected that the hardwood would hold up the best. Um, so very impressed and surprised by that. I'm always and will continue to be impressed by the dovetail clamping system. It's something that I will continue to use. 
Um, I will not be scared to use it in plywood from now on. And um, I think that it is one of the best systems out there as far as universal clamping systems for your shop and shop projects. So I appreciate y'all tuning in. Thank you for watching. Go check out that video right there. I got it teed up for you and we'll see you next week.